everybody and welcome to Lining Up Ducks. If you're just joining me, my name is Rachel. Today is one of our first in a series of budgeting basics. If you are new to the cash budgeting concept, I want to give you five tips to success that we have found the most essential in our cash budgeting. We've been using a cash budget for more than 10 years. And there are five essential things that we have found that are truly our keys to success when it comes to cash budgeting. Today I'm gonna to share those with you and give you a couple of other things that you might wanna think about if you are considering setting up a cash budget of your own. Our first tip to success is do not keep all of your cash budget envelopes with you at all times. I made this mistake when we first started our cash budgeting system way back before we ever started having children and it nearly bit me in the tail. We were out shopping for Christmas one year and I had all of my fun little Dave Ramsey envelopes with me in my purse and I left my purse at the mall with about $800 in those cash envelopes. Needless to say, Scott wasn't very happy when we got three quarters of a mile down the road and I had this, oh, I left my purse at moment in the car. So he turned around really fast and drove as fast as he could back to the mall, to the food court and we were just, angels were watching over us because our, my purse was exactly where I had left it on the back of the chair. No one had bothered it and all of the $800 were left in there. But that taught me a very valuable lesson. Don't keep all of your envelopes with you. The other reason not to keep all of your envelopes with you is it is too tempting to pilfer out of your other envelopes mostly your sinking funds. So if you've never heard of a sinking fund before, we'll go into that on budgeting basics, but basically you are saving up for an event that you know is coming. So like your Christmas gifts. It's too tempting to blow your budget when you have a lot of extra cash with you. If you don't keep all of your cash envelopes with you at all times, how do you make this budget work? Well, that is our tip number two. Tip number two is to plan your days ahead. Every morning before you leave for the day, go through your calendar, see if there's anything that you need to do for the day, grab those particular cash envelopes out of your, of your stash and throw them in your wallet. That way you have the money that you need with you when you go and run your errands that you're running for the day, but you don't have any extra cash with you that may tempt you to pick up that extra item you see at the mall that is not on your intended errand list for the day. If you like this Budgeting Basics series, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. I have several more videos planned that are all centered around the basics of budgeting. Tip number three is to have a local bank. And I know this seems a little off for most of you, but I, we are a military family and most military families bank with large national credit unions or banks where they do not have branches on every street corner. We've always had our large military bank account, but we always have to have a local bank account as well. And the reason why is because you can use your debit card to get your cash out for your cash envelopes, but it generally always has to be in a division of 20 unless you are really lucky and find a cat and find an ATM machine that breaks it down a little farther, but you generally don't get to choose how your cash is broken down. Having a local bank that you can transfer money back and forth makes it really easy just to write a check off of your local bank account, break down your cash exactly how you need it and give your slip to the teller. They really appreciate it when you have it nice and tidy and it makes your life so much easier when it comes to budgeting. Also having someone that you can walk in and sit down and speak to is absolutely invaluable. Number four is to always keep some oops cash with you. This has been our absolute key to success to stop us from transferring money back from savings here, there, and everywhere and stop us using our debit cards. We used to keep our oops money in our checking account, but somehow it was just too easy to transfer money from one account to another if we just needed to make one more purchase. So now we each keep $25 in cash with us at all times, either in our car or in our wallet. Mine stays in my wallet, my husband stays in his car. 
So you need $25 each if you have a partner or if, if you're single, you may want to set a different amount for just you. But where this comes in super handy is if I need Scott to stop by the store and pick up a gallon of milk or a loaf of bread, he won't have the grocery envelope with him, but he does have his oops cash with him. And all I do when he gets home is take money out of the grocery envelope and refill his oops envelope to that $25 mark. It also gives us a little bit of leeway in our restaurant budget. If we have family that comes in town and wants to go out to eat and our $50 budget isn't quite enough because as a family of six, it's very difficult for us to go out to eat for $50. So oops money is absolutely a must. Number five strictly pertains to your grocery envelope. If you split up your grocery money from week to week, so say we have $300 per bi-weekly paycheck and I give us $150 per week for our groceries if you shop weekly. Never, 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 ever steal from next week's grocery money. You're always going to need that budgeted amount for groceries and then you'll end up being short for next week and you'll have nowhere to pull the money from. So never pilfer your grocery budget. That is one budget item to keep intact and never pilfer from. Another tip to making sure that your grocery budget goes as far as it can is to meal plan. I hate meal planning as much as every other mom, but I sure am glad I do it every time I do it. It's just a necessary evil when it comes to budgeting and it absolutely keeps my grocery budget in check while I'm able to feed a family of six on $600 a month and usually, let's see if I have, yeah, usually I have money left over at the end of a pay period. So definitely, definitely, definitely meal plan. Here's a bonus tip for you, and that is to save, 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 save. Have a purpose in mind. The cash budgeting method has the ability to save you a lot of money if you are one of those people that does not spend cash like we are. So having a a designated purpose for all of your leftover money at the end of a pay period will keep you from having all of that leftover money just kind of flying out of your hands. Have a stated purpose that is a want in your budget, something that you really, really want to save for, and you will find that you can save for that very, very quickly with the cash envelope method. All right, everybody, that's it. Those are my top five tips for making your budget successful on a cash envelope system. I hope these helped you. I have several budgeting basics videos planned. If you're new to our channel and you're curious how our family of six spends and saves our money, please check out our bi-weekly budgeting videos. They're usually labeled the cash stuffing videos. I do those videos at least monthly, if not bi-weekly, and you will be able to see everything down to the penny that our family spends money on. Thanks so much for watching everybody. See you next time.